Well, even though March is well underway, we are not quite done with the wintry weather just yet. The month of March is often a month of transition where Mother Nature slowly eases us into the spring season, but it also reminds us that wintry weather not quite in the past. We have an alert day in the forecast and we're going to talk about March snowfall and in particular late season snowfall snow that occurs during March, April, even beyond. How common is it and what role does climate change play on this late season wintry weather and also late season and snowfall that we are going to see in that WTOL 11 weather forecast. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to watch this week's Climate Friday newsletter. Whether you're tuning in on YouTube or WTOL 11 plus, we're going to break down the data here, wintry weather in March and what you need to know. Let's dig into the science here as we analyze the frequency of late season snowfall. How common is it and what can you expect for the month of March and beyond? Here's what a normal March has in store. Yes, we do average snowfall during the month of March. And a typical March actually features almost half a foot of snow accumulation. 5.3 inches are official average at the Toledo Express Airport, so it's certainly commonplace that we do get a decent bit of snowfall during the month of March. Here's what a normal March has in store. 5.3 inches, making it the fourth snowiest month of the season. Of course, taking the cake is January, followed by February, and December also averages more snow than March, but we're still the fourth snowiest month. Now, the temperatures start to become and resemble more that of spring especially by the latter half of the month, which looks and feels more characteristic of the spring season. Our average high during March is actually 48 degrees, and with those temperatures above freezing, snow becomes less and less frequent as we push towards the latter half of the month. That being said, we're still on the front side of March, and that often resembles the continuation of wintry weather. March also brings precipitation in the form of snowfall, wintry mix, and ice, and we average 2.6 inches of precipitation precipitation during the month of March. When you think of spring, you may picture umbrella weather and that rainy, damp spring weather. A lot of that doesn't come till April. March snowfall actually exceeds March precipitation by almost twofold, and that March precip amount that does include melted snow and melted ice that may fall during the month. All right, if you're a snow lover, this may be fun to look at some of the most snowy marches on record. Of course, even with our alert day storm system, we are going to be well shy of the these impressive snowfall readings 93. If you lived in Northwest Ohio and Southeastern Michigan exactly 20 years ago, you may remember um, that snowfall that brought us 17.7 inches back in 93. Actually, that was 30 years ago, longer ago than you think. 2008, that brought us 17.4 inches of accumulation. 1916 was also an impressive March. We got 17 inches in 1899. And another one in more recent memory is 77, which brought us over two feet of accumulation. Now, oftentimes, March is a wild card. Some seasons, it does bring us a lot of snow. Other marches, no snow to be seen whatsoever. All of this list features just a trace of snow accumulation, and what that means is nothing that could be measured with a ruler, just a few flakes flying from the sky, essentially zero impacts. In recent memory, 2010 brought us no measurable snowfall, 1991, 1946, and also 1927 and 1908 at the bottom of those lists, sharing the spot for the least snowy March. Now, even as we look towards March and beyond, snowfall still does happen, love it or hate it. I already talked about March snowfall, but what about April and beyond. Yes, April is a spring month and you often think of April as bringing those rains and warmer weather, but we do average 1.3 inches of snow during the month of April, so we do get that accumulation. Generally not more than a dusting, but still a reminder that wintry weather does happen in spring. During the month of May, we do not average any measurable snow. That's not to say it can't happen, but hopefully by that point we have fully transitioned to the spring season, although April is often a transitional one as well, as we see over one inch of average snowfall. Now, during the month of March, we do typically start to see an uptick in moisture and precipitation that brings us an active storm track, and that includes not only snow, but also rainfall. Our snowiest March on record fell just shy of eight inches of rain. Boy, that's a lot of rain during one month's time, isn't it? That happened in 1913. 
a couple other rainy marches. You can see them on the list here, all of which brought about five to six inches of total moisture. So what role is climate change playing in this precipitation? Well, we've talked before in the Climate Friday newsletter about how warmer temperatures cause more evaporation, almost like when you're boiling water on the stove. If you turn the heat up on the stove, the water is going to boil faster. Similarly, when we have warmer temperatures, we see more evaporation that makes clouds, and some of those are rain clouds. Back in 1970, we saw lower rainfall rates. What that means is the rain was less intense. Nowadays, you see that uptick, that linear trend that reflects an increased intensity of the rainfall. That means when it rains, it pours. The rain is harder now than it was back in 1970, and that is by a factor of about a 25% increase. Now, on the y-axis here, the unit we're using to measure rainfall intensity is in hundreds of an inch per hour. That's the hourly rainfall rate. And now here in 2022 to 2023, when that data set ends, we're seeing rainfall that happens 25% stronger than it was back in the day. Now we've had a wet winter so far, even before the month of March. And looking back on February, we got almost five inches of liquid rainfall during the month of February. And that made it number five on the list of wettest Februarys on record. And what we're seeing is wetter winter weather as a whole due to climate change. Of course, there are a number of factors that contribute to this, including the jet stream pattern, La Nina or El Nino. Climate change is just one of several factors that makes winter weather a little bit wetter. In that typical La Nina weather pattern, we see an active storm track that brings the jet stream across the Great Lakes and the Ohio River Valley. And that's been a trend of this winter, hasn't it? Quite the active storm track across the lower Great Lakes. And that's brought us a lot of precipitation, but not necessarily a lot of snow. If you wanted snow this winter, you'd have to go on the colder side of things. And that includes the upper Midwest, like southern Minnesota and southern Wisconsin, where they've gotten hammered with one after another winter storm. Across the Great Lakes, though, this La Nina weather pattern is characteristic of wetter than normal conditions. So again, climate change, one factor, but it's not necessarily causal of every single system that we get during the winter time. All right, now even though this alert day might scream winter, we do have some signs of spring to look forward to. So what are those signs? The hour spring forward, the time change and start of daylight saving time always marks the spring season, especially if you're a night owl. After the time change, the sunset is going to slide back an hour and Sunday night you will enjoy daylight. Get this until almost 8 o'clock p.m. in the evening. The sunset time is going to be at 737 p.m. Certainly a sign of spring, even if there is a little bit of snow on the ground this weekend. Now we are gaining daylight in a hurry and we're gaining two minutes and 47 seconds per day as we continue our trend towards the summer season. That daylight peaks in late June and you can see that daylight daylight graph going up, up, up until we reach the summer season and we top out over 14 hours of daylight. Right now we are just shy of 12 hours of daylight until we approach the spring equinox, which of course translates to equal parts day and night or we reach that 12 hour threshold. And then after June, it's all downhill. But thankfully right now we are on the uptick and we can look forward to brighter days and more daylight. Again, 737 PM sunset time after the time change and by the the end of March, that sunset's going to be at almost 8 o'clock p.m. and you'll enjoy a sliver of daylight on the horizon until close to 830 by the end of the month. Some other impacts of climate change on spring weather. You might not always think of these, but the allergies is also one factor, and that's something we're going to delve more into when we hit the peak of allergy season in April and May. But one factor that I've noticed and that scientists have also noticed allergy seasons getting a little worse because of climate change. What might be causing that? Well, we're seeing a longer growing season. In other words, that means we have more days and nights that are above freezing. This is something that area farmers know quite well. Back in 1970, on average, we only saw about 145 consecutive days per year that were above freezing. And look at that line shoot on up. By the mid 2020s, we are now 43 days more consecutive above freezing. What that does is it allows allergens to propagate and thrive, and thus the allergy season tends to be a little worse. Of course, a longer growing season and more days above freezing that also impacts our area farmers as well and has some profound impacts on growing in Northwest Ohio and Southeastern Michigan. Once again, even though we're in the middle of March now, we do have some reminders that wintry weather, it's not quite over just yet. If you're watching 
watching this on Friday. We still have that alert day snowfall to get through. And if you're watching this later over the weekend, well, you have those later sunsets to look forward to. And of course, whatever Mother Nature has in store as we look towards the middle of March and beyond, we're likely to see a mixed bag of weather that includes some taste of spring, but also some reminders that winter's not done just yet. In next week's edition of Climate Friday Newsletter, we'll have the latest as March continues to unfold. Thanks for tuning in.